I can't. I finished it a couple weeks ago and I don't know what you're like but when I finish something sometimes I need to put it away and then come back to it and appreciate it. And so when I came back to this a couple weeks later it was like wow I can't believe I did this. And I bet you're thinking the same thing too. I put this together. I did a video and it's really just putting sections together and matching seams. <laughs> and there wasn't really anything different than what the pattern tells you so I decided that I'll just maybe stick a few of those short clips in. Um, I just don't think it makes for a compelling video. Uh, the instructions are perfect for this and it's not hard to do. So just show a few of those videos. I'm going to show the finished quilt. I'm going to talk about the pattern. I'm going to talk about the fabric kit. I'm just going to kind of go over this pattern in hindsight now that it's done. Um, maybe there are some things that can be approved upon or if you're new here and you're wondering about this, you know, what can you do to make it a little bit easier on you? Not that it's hard, but just to make your life a little easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw a few pictures up right now of the quilt. And uh, yeah, I've, got a, I've also got um, a link to my website down below if you wanna go there and let me know how it's going for you, how it went for you, or in the comments below, let me know how it went for you. And let me know what you think of my feelings about the pattern and what are your feelings about the pattern. So I'd love to hear from you. If you're new, I do have the link to the pattern and the fabric kit down below. You can check that link out and any other links that I've got. It really does help the channel out. Hit subscribe notification. You'll see when this gets quilted. I'm gonna be taking it to the quilter soon. My mom did this too and she's turning it into a king size quilt so maybe we'll put our side by side and see what they look like. But anyway, let's get started. So as far as putting together our sections, this is a very good guide on how to do that. Um, it shows you where to start, then add these. So, it's just, it, when I was doing all my videos, it was just me taking sections, lining up seams. Like right here, you know, I line up that seam, line up that seam. That's all all these videos were. And I didn't want to do 15, 20 minutes of like line this seam up. So I iron it this way when it's all in here. I mean, they don't tell you which seams, but when you get in here and start putting this together, it's very, very obvious which seams you need to line up. And the body went together very well. Like the hardest part, honestly, was <clears throat> when I had to add the other section, the other half onto this, and then I've got a really big quilt I'm working with. But I mean, it's just, that's how what you're doing when you're putting together a big quilt. <clears throat> and then the uh, border, oh, I got a string, there we go. The border went on very easily. They just have you make one gigantic strip and then cut it two sides and sew it on. That's not hard to show either. So that's why I decided not to go through the construction of this because the pattern is very, very good at this. And I don't, I think if you're actually doing this, that you aren't gonna have any issues with this. If you're this far into this pattern, then you've matched a lot of scenes and had to do this. If you're new here and you're wondering about this, then this, I just want to say when you get to this section, it is, it's a very, very well laid out on how to put it together. Just remember to match your seams up. And it's not hard to see where seams match up. That's why I didn't show it. I think that, you know, if you're this far into the quilt, you've got that mastered. If you're thinking about do this, doing this quilt, then by the time you get to this stage, you'll have it mastered. So I'm not gonna bore you with the little details. Okay, let's get started with the fabric kit. I was wondering what yours looks like. I did keep mine in the bag and I kept all my extra fabrics inside of this envelope right here and that's my backing for when I take it to the quilter. Got my gigantic quilt sitting over here so you can admire part of it. Um, but yeah, got a lot of fabrics here. Um, this is for the binding, that's what's left. 
Uh, I have just a little bit of backing left, or not backing, background. Um, how'd you do on background? I made one mistake, so, and then my mom's making it, so we kind of shared our fabrics. And then, yeah, all of these. So, I gotta find out what to do. I even kept the scraps from the body here. I don't know if they're usable, but I kept them. So maybe I'll make a pillow, a decorative pillow for my, um, to go with my quilt that has some of the squares from inside the pattern and inside the quilt so that it matches. But yeah, there's quite a bit of fabric here. Uh, they did not skimp on giving you fabric. So that's what the fabric kit looks like for me. That's how I kept track of it. It is a little messy now. It wasn't that messy while I was doing it. Um, I've been through it a few times, but I just kept it in the envelope, kept it in here, and kept it all together. So, how does that compare to yours, I was wondering. Or if you're new here, you can do this. You can organize, keep your fabrics organized in here. One thing my mom did was she used bags like this, and she pulled it out and used these bags and kept her fabric in that. But I use these bags for organizing my blocks. Like you can see, I had the intersection block in here. Um, but I have a link to these down below. They're from Amazon. I use them for all my projects. So there's the fabric kit. I just wanted to go through you real quick what I had left and how I organized it. I wanted to go through the pattern as a whole. Um, it was a very nicely writ written pattern. There's a few things I would change or do before I started again, if I were to ever do this again or tell someone to do it. I'll go over those later in um, what I think it is, but it was well laid out for piecing. It had the, uh, up here it had things to know before you begin, the um, tools you'll need, it had a fabric layout guide in the back, which I'll kind of go over that later too. The block sections, the construction of the blocks is very nicely pointed out here on how to put it together. So I really, you know, it did work out well for that. Um, the construction of the blocks, the pattern, there's uh, fabrics back here. It tells you that's in your kit. It does not tell you where to put these and I'll go over that later too. But as far as the pattern, very well written, um, maybe laid out a little differently, but um, it tells you up front here how it's gonna look in the book, if you remember part one, is the, how to read the blocks, how to read the sections, and then assembly. Anyway, that's what I thought of the pattern. I would recommend this, but I would recommend it with some asterisks, and I'll go over those in a few minutes. Um, one of the big things I'd say about the block sections is if there is not a seam noted, then I would note it with a pen or a pencil that it's an open seam. She does state that at the beginning, but if you put this away for a few weeks or a month, you may come back and forget. Like, how am I supposed to sew these? Or how am I supposed to iron these seams? So I would go through each block section, and if you don't see how a seam is supposed to be ironed, mark it that it's an open seam. Um, other than that, the construction is very well laid out. Another thing I would like to say about the blocks is, and I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes, is I would have liked to have seen the fabrics labeled somehow so that you know which fabrics you need to pull for each block. But I'm going to go over that in a few minutes too because I have some ideas. One thing I also want to say about the blocks is it says number of fabrics is four on this block, but as you can see, only two of the blocks actually have four fabrics in it. Three of the blocks have, or two of the blocks have three fabrics, and this bottom block only has two fabrics. So you just, you've got to re be real mindful and maybe mark before you go how many fabrics are in each so that you can figure out how to cut them over here because they're labeled by the number of fabrics on how to cut them. thing I'd like to talk about with this pattern and see how you feel about that is even though you have this fabric layout back here and all your fabrics here 
I personally would have liked to have seen each of these fabrics like labeled with a letter and then the letter put inside here so we know what it is and then possibly with the blocks um, like with up here give me the letters of the fabrics I need um, to pull for that block and you should only have three fabrics here three fabrics here and two fabrics there it would have made it so much faster to put this together instead of really trying to go back and forth through pages and figure out which blocks have which fabrics and how to apply them up here to the block construction also the other thing it would have been it would have cut hours off of trying to figure out which half square triangles i would have needed if you could have just listed that you need four of fabric a four of fabric b and so on you know it just would have made this section instead of just listing colors it would have made this section so much faster and it's it's a slow section anyway because you have a lot of half square triangles but to figure out these fabrics was really time consuming this is not a complaint it's just kind of like uh, a, a 2020 is hindsight type thing and if I and if you have not done this I just feel like that would be a great way to get this done is to take your fabrics and put letters on them and then you can start applying those letters throughout this pattern I just found in the other tulip pink pattern it really worked well to have letters that she referred to uh, the other thing with the templates is they worked out great I used um, freezer paper and then I was able to iron those pattern the um, templates onto my fabrics and then cut them out that way it worked out really well there you go there's my hot take on the pattern <laughs> Take it or leave it, I guess, or let me know for sure down below what you think. Um, or did you have as much fun as I did? Because I really did have a lot of fun. I might have brought some things up that could change the pattern, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I would still recommend this pattern. Maybe with a few little tweaks on lettering and stuff like that for the fabrics, but it really was fun. I looked forward to it every week when I was doing it. Um, it was very, it could be very challenging at times, but uh, I don't know. It's hard and it's not hard. Um, it looks hard. It looks harder than it is, is. Let me put it that way. It really does. It looks harder than it is. I think finding the fabrics for each block was probably some of the hardest parts to do. Um, if you want to see this get quilted, uh, hit the subscribe button notification bell you get notified of all the other fun stuff we're doing here and when I get that quilted and probably when my mom gets hers quilted I will put that up and show you we'll do a little tiny quilt show and if you want to see that um, stick around I had a lot of fun on this little Tula pink butterfly second edition quilt along journey and I hope you did too um, let me know down below if you did it what you thought and all that fun stuff um, check out the links it really does help the channel and I hope that you do subscribe um, to my channel because we are gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna do a lot of stuff in 2023 some new stuff some different stuff so stick around for that you can check all that out on my website anyway I'll see you in the next video bye